Uh, welcome back guys, time for uh, another one. This hopefully is going to be an interesting video. Um, this one I'm going to do a bit of a talk on braid and mono, or braid versus mono, mono versus braid. Pros and cons on both, which I think are pros and cons. But I've heard a lot of different things, uh, uh, way people think about different lines and stuff while I've been working in tackle shops and what they think it's good for and not good for and everything else. So what I was going to do after the end of this video, I'll be interested to see what you guys think in the comments below, what your pros are, what your cons are. Do you prefer mono? Do you prefer braid? Why? And it'll be interesting to see what each other, you know, says about it. Okay? So hopefully this one you can join in a bit and, you know, we'll get into it and see the pros and cons on braid and mono and what we all think. Okay, to start off with, I'll start off, you can see here, there's just some YGK braid, some good Japanese braid, some good old mono, okay, just something to look at, and now I've got my board up here, but I won't face the camera towards the board, and I've just written down a few, a few pros and cons, which I think, and what I, so we'll go through what I think, and about each of it, and then later on, once it's again in the comments, hopefully you guys will add to it, and we'll see what you guys like, and don't like about it. Let's we'll start off with, I've got up here braid. So first of all braid, I've got some pros. So first pro on with braid, it's nice and thin. Uh, so okay, so nice and thin. So in other words, on the small spools we get nowadays, you get a lot more, lot more line capacity with braid. You can either go like 150 yards on really small spin reels, or you can go a couple of thousand meters on big game reels and electric deep dropping if you want. And hot, they hold a lot of line, can do with this braid, they're getting so thin. So that's a pro. The next one is I've got up here is casting well. And of course, braid, especially with your lighter, lighter outfits, if you want to go chasing like flat air, brim, and everything else, a nice thin soft braid will actually outcast mono by far. Okay, so casting is good for braid. Uh, what else I got there? Sensitive. It is very sensitive, especially when you're lure fishing and you want to stay in contact with your lure. And if a fish or something seems to pass through the breeze on your lure, you want to know it's there. And braid generally is sensitive enough to do that. You can watch it on the water, you can feel it in your hands, even through a good quality rod. You just you'll know if a fish is even like thinking about it in your lure. This is very sensitive, so it's it's good for that. Uh, what else? Another pro I've got there: cut through the water. And what I mean by that is when I'm float lining for snapper. When I used to float line years ago before braid, it shows how old I am. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it's not that old. Um, we used to use mono, but mono can leave a big bell in your line. So if you're sitting here on your boat and you see your line heading out, but a lot of the time people think the line's heading this way in the current and it's out here, but it's not. Generally your bait's down here. That's just the current and a big bell in your line you'll get with mono. With braid, it cuts through the water a lot better. So between your bait down here and your boat, there's only a slight belly. It's not as big as mono, so it cuts through the water a lot better, thinner diameter, which is a good thing. Okay, next thing, what else we got there for a pro? In braid, or oh, just went through casting. So casting, great, but for lures. So a little light finesse lures, like once again, brim fishing, if you want to go even maybe trout fishing with little light lures, chasing whiting on poppers and stick baits, small stick baits and stuff, on like three pound, four pound braid, super thin braid, cast really well, very sensitive, works. A bit hard to cast with mono. You can cast with mono, don't get me wrong, you can do it, it's just a bit harder, you don't get the distance. And Well, this won't throw out the, it hasn't got the memory either, has mono either. It comes off your spool fairly straight, this will throw the loops. Uh, what else we got there? Oh, okay. That's all the pros I've got for for braid. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what you guys come up with in the comments once again. See what your pros are. So did, I, did I miss something? Is there something I forgot or something you disagree with? Let me know. Now we'll go through cons on braid. Or what I think are cons. Okay. So a few people nowadays want to go troll. Uh, everyone's always trolling, but a few people now want to start trolling with braid. I find this a bit of a con because when I ask them about their rods, they're running rollers. Braid on rollered rods doesn't work. I haven't got a roller rod anymore, I sold them. Anyway, you know what, yeah, most guys know what the rollers are on, on game rods. Doesn't work too well, unless you've got like a very expensive rod with high quality rollers, 
there's no room in between the roller and the frame. So the braid's not gonna get caught, so that's fine. But most people are running cheaper roller rides with cheaper guides, and the rollers, you can wobble them a bit between the roller and the frame. The braid will get caught in between the two on a good fish, and when it gets caught in there, it's all over. It's gonna cut through, break braid very quickly and easily. So, thin braids, that's a con for trolling with roller rods, no. Uh, next con is breaks easy around reef. It does, reef, um, okay, so reef, rocks, even raspy teeth, braid does not like it. Any sort of sharp edge, this stuff will break very easy. That's why we're always running like long leaders on the end. Long mono leaders, fluorocarbon leaders. We don't run braid straight to hook, straight to lures or anything else. It doesn't like teeth, it doesn't like reef. So that is a major con. Okay. Uh, next one I've got here is trolling. Okay. Um, a lot of people are going to disagree with this one. So a lot of people are trolling with braid nowadays. I will not. I don't like it. Uh, main reason, there's no stretch in it. Absolutely no stretch. Even if I'm tr trawling with a rod, say, like this one, this nice Gary Howard here. Nice heavy duty guide and stuff on it. Fine for braid. The braid's not going to weigh these guides. Not going to get tangled or cut. But there's no stretch in it. And when we're running short, short strokers, they're not exactly the lightest tip on these rods. And to run braid, you're going to need your back your drag off as well. Because with being no stretch, when a fish hits, um, and you've got a locked up drag and a fairly stiff rod, all you're gonna do is rip hooks out, break leaders, you know, rip the jaws out of poor old fish. It's just not gonna work. You need a bit of give there. So you have to back, basically back off your drag, which I don't like doing. When I'm trawling, my drags are set. From strike, from basically hook up to finish, I leave them alone, they're set. I don't like mixing and matching drags when I'm trawling for game fish. I just have them preset before I leave home, and that's where they stay. Um, and for that reason, I run mono on all my trawling gear. See? Mono one there. Um, yeah, no stretch. It's a good way to break lines, break things. It's, I just don't like it. Unless you've got a softer tip rod and you're willing to back your drag off a bit so a fish can actually hit the lures, turn his head and go without ripping his jaws out, well, then you can go. But I prefer not to. I think it's a con. Um, okay. Next one. Knots, okay, braid. Like nowadays, most of us know knots, but quite a few of us still don't know what knots to tie. So the con with braid is, especially when you're doing like leaders, tying leaders on, some of these knots can be quite complicated for people, like the FG knot. For a lot of us, it sounds simple and can do it quickly. But don't forget, there's a lot of people out there who can't tie them, who can't get their fingers to work and find them com quite complicated. And if you don't do them, then you got stuck with all bright knots and double unis and all sorts which will work with braid, but they just end up being bulky, so they don't cast through your guides as well. So when you run a, run, a, run a long leader, you need a nice thin knot to go through your guides. And if you can't tie those knots, well, that's a bit of a con. Um, and the other thing is too, a lot of guys with braid, they're always looking for new knots. That, um, they don't know if their old knots are gonna work with braid. Just your stock standard blood knots and that will work with braid, don't get me wrong. Just do a few more wraps, because braid is so slippery, so smooth nowadays. Just do a few more wraps, something to grip onto. Okay guys, just don't go around three times or four times. It's probably gonna pull out under pressure. Go you like six, seven, eight times. Just do a few more wraps, just some, you know, make sure, lock it off. Uh, what else we got? In a con. Okay, here's a good one, bait casters. And lots of people still have trouble casting a good old bait caster. Um, still get a few backlashes, you know, little knots, as we call them in bait casters when we're casting. I've been using them all my life. I still get the occasional one. It's just, it's just one of those things. It does happen. And untangling mono is a lot easier than untangling braid. Like braid cast well, but if you lose concentration, forget the thumb it or use your little adjustment, you get a tangle in braid on a bait caster, it can be a pain in the ass to get out. And sometimes you can't get it out, depending on how, how bad it is. And being in not a cheap line, that really sucks. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else we got here? Another con. So, yep, this one you probably all agree with. Not cheap. Okay, compared to a lot of monos, braid is not cheap. For 150 and 300 yard spools, they can range from cheap $30, which is not exactly cheap, or you can buy a spool of mono for 20 bucks upwards. 
um, up to a couple of hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars for Brady. It can be very expensive. Okay, and probably the last con, you don't, not, every, not everyone does this, you don't always need to do this, but a lot of the reels you do, is when you're spooling up with braid, most people are trying not to spend a lot of money, so they buy 150 or 300 yards, which is fine, but it depends on the size of your spool. And a lot of the spools are quite large. Now, um, so you need to put backing on them just to fill out the space. Um, so, Basically, once again, con, you've got to put backing on probably 80% of your reels. doesn't matter if it's a couple of layers of backing or half a spool, but you need to put some backing on. And then you need a nice, good, solid knot to join to your braid, and then you've got to top shot it. And then once you top shot it and you've got all your braid on, then you've got to tie a leader on. So basically, it's mono, braid, mono. You could say that's a con. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Once you get used to it, you don't, you don't give it a second thought. But if you're new to it, it can be a pain. Okay. So that's pros and cons on the braid. I mean, it seems fair enough, but I'll be, we'll be interested to see what you guys say in the comments, what you agree with and don't agree with. And maybe I forgot a few things or didn't mention a few things. You guys let me know. I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Okay. I will tell you at the end what I prefer to use braid and what I prefer to use mono for, because I do use both of them still. Okay, now the mono, good old mono. We'll start off with the pros. So the first pro in the, I've got written down is for trolling. I love mono for trolling. It's got give in it, it's got stretch. So I don't have to muck around my drags. I have my drags preset, short stroke or rods, I'm just, I'm good to go. I don't need to worry about yeah, no stretch ripping hooks out or anything else. Mono is just a good, fantastic all round trolling line. But when I'm talking trolling, I'm more mainly talking like sport fish, game fishing, uh, marlin, wahoo, dolphin fish, you know, just pelagics. Okay, I just prefer to use mono for that sort of fishing. I think it's 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 built for that. That's what it's built for. Okay, next pro with it, when you're buying this line, it usually comes in 600 or 1200 meters. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Excuse me. Which is perfect for most light tackle to heavy tackle reels, because most light tackle to heavy tackle reels are going to hold anywhere from 600 to 1200 yards or meters of mono. <coughs> that's what they're built for and they're designed for so 600 meters like on your tier nice and tld 25s and tier nice 30s and stuff i'll hold about 600 to you know 15 kilo that's what they're designed for your tiagra 50s pen international 50s and things you put 24 kilo a thousand meters on them like the wides that's what they're designed for so you don't need to muck around with backing and everything else these you'll go from mono from top to bottom all the way through no special knots nothing else so that's that's a pro <coughs> okay uh next one better abrasion resistance and braid well that is true this like mono a good quality mono or say a harder mono is good around reefs and raspy teeth and stuff it's got a, a coating on it abrasion resistance sort of it can get roughed up a lot more than braid. Braid will break very easy. Mono will take quite a beating, surprisingly. It's not bad, it's, and it's really good if you want to go around fishing off rocks and stuff. Okay, so that's a that's a plus. That's definitely a pro. They can take a bit more of a beating than braid. Uh, next one, easy to tie. That's true. Once again, most of us learn how to tie basic knots with good old mono. Mono, still using the same knots we've used since the dawn of time. It's very easy to tie and quite easy to work with. That's also a pro. Uh, prices, not as much as braid, very true. For most of it, some of these bigger spools like this, if you for your game fish, and will cost you like $100, somewhere between one to 200, depending on how much and the brand, still expensive. But generally overall, when you're buying like 300 yard spools, 500 yard spools and stuff, it's a lot cheaper than braid. So that's also a plus. And if you're new to fishing, it's a good way to get into it. Okay. What else we got there? Um, great trolling. I think I already talked about trolling. Sorry. That's enough there again. So, yeah, trolling life for game fish, sport fish, that's the one. Okay, that's all the pros. Cons. Okay, the first con I've got up there for mono is it does twist easy. So, if you've got a lure that's not working, 
this will twist up really easily and drive you nuts. Um, if you're fishing float line, if you're snapper, okay, and you got mono on your bait runners, which I run mono on my bait runners, I like mono on my bait runners, I don't know why I just do, it's, you know, where I've been, I've always used mono on bait runners since, since I was, you know, very young. Um, if you're not using your bait runner correctly, it will twist the living bejesus out of your mono and drive you insane. So it does twist really easy compared to braid. Braid takes a hell of a lot to twist. I mean, a hell of a lot. This stuff will twist up quite quickly. If your baits are spinning or your bait, you're not using your bait running correctly or your lures are spinning or something's just not right, this will twist. That's a major con. Um, and next one is not a lot of line capacity on spin reels. Well, nowadays, most of the spin reels are getting quite small and shallow spools because they're designed for braid, okay? So if you still want to fish with mono, you're not going to get a lot of line on here because the diameter of this compared to that, there's a big difference. There really is. So if you wanted to go put this like on a Saragossa or something, and like you could put 80 pound braid on a Saragossa, 200 yards plus backing with braid, not a problem. This is 24 kilo, you're probably going to get 250, 280 without backing. So far less line, okay? And on little reels, if you're not careful and you don't look at the diameter, on smaller reels, you're gonna get absolutely bugger all line on them. So be wary of that. Line capacity is a big one, that's a con. Uh, it doesn't cut through the water, big belly. Okay, so once again, like with a float line for snapper or something, like old school, as I explained before, with boats here, um, lines going out this way. Bait's generally down here, not out here. That's usually a big belly. That's with mono. You'll get big bellies with mono. It grabs the water more. It doesn't cut through as well as braid. The thinner braid will cut through a lot easier than mono. So that's a bit of a con as well. Okay. And even when you're like, if you're deep dropping, like you got a, you're drifting and you have a heavy sinker straight on the boat and you want a bottom bash for a few pearlies, snapper and everything else, Braids are a far better choice than mono. Mono works, but it's not as sensitive. Um, you don't feel as much, and it gets more of a belly in it, okay? So something to be wary of. Uh, okay, and cons, so apart from the sense, okay, and I'll just explain that too. Not as, it's um, not as, it's, I can't speak, sensitive as braid, okay? So with mono, you won't feel as much as you will with braid. Braid will keep you really direct with your baits and lures and everything else. Mono, like I said, a bit of a belly in it. You've got to be really on the ball and really thinking. It's not as sensitive. You won't feel as much. So you've got to be really, really on the ball with it. And last one, doesn't cast as well. Well, that is true. Okay. Like I said, we all grew up with this, and it does cast. You do can cast, big cast with this, but you need the right reels and rods and well balanced. Okay, but if you go side by side, same, say, say 10 kilo line, 10 kilo line on a surf rod, and you're gonna go casting, same weight, braid will outcast you, every time. It just sails through the air, comes off the spool, runs through the guide, a lot easier than mono throwing loops, okay? Braid is always better at casting than mono. Mono will cast, but if you're going for big casts, you're better off going with braid, unless you're using an alby, then stick with a mono, because braid on alveys don't work. You're gonna cut your fingers to shreds. Okay, so they're my pros and cons on mono and braid. Um, it'd be interesting, guys, to see, once again, what you guys write in the comments. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the mono and braid, what you like, don't like. If you agree with me, don't agree, feel free. Let's, uh, we'll have a chat and see where this goes. This should be rather interesting. I'll be very interested to see your thoughts on this. Because everyone's got, if I talk in the shop, I've got a different opinions, and it'd be great to hear what you guys have to say. Um, at the bottom of this, I've got, what about there, Perfect 4. So I just wrote down what, this is basically what I like to use them for, these two. So we'll start off with, with a braid. When I'm fishing with a braid, this is what I usually use it for, okay? So we've got deep dropping, of course. Uh, bottom bashing, I do like use further braid. Like I said, straighter down, more sensitive. Float lining for snapper, because I'm usually running bait casters nowadays, so I'll get line capacity, I don't get the huge belly, I'm more in contact with the bait, so I'll use it for float lining. Uh, when I'm live bait fishing, once again, don't get the belly, so it's down, down under the boat and in contact. Um, casting, well obviously, 
chasing flathead, brim, whatever, if I'm casting small lures, slugs for mackerel or tuna, braid, so I'm cast a lot further. And lure work, well once again, same, just working lures, it's very sensitive. Um, you can get a lot of action out of your lures, you stay in contact with it better. So that's what I use a braid for. Mono, perfect for trolling. I love me mono for trolling, I will never change that. I'll always have mono on my trawling gear. Uh, surf fishing, well I grew up down south surf fishing. Um, I don't do it much anymore, but when I grew up I used to use it for casting. Nowadays I probably use a spin reel and put a braid on it for casting. But for you guys still using albies, love albies, put mono on the albies, okay? It'll save your fingers and you'll still get good cast out of it. Just make sure it's a well balanced outfit, you'll be good to go. Uh, this one a lot of people don't think about, land based game. Like once again, down southern Sydney, southern New South Wales, uh, Victoria, South Australia, when we're chasing tuna and things off the rocks. Yeah, mono, more abrasion resistant. Um, huge, these game reels are gonna hold a thousand meter plus. So, the way to go off the rocks for land based game, go mono. Well, I did when I was growing up down there, and I, was, I would if I went back to do it again. I wouldn't be using braid. And this is another thing, great for kids. Mono, if you're starting out, you got young fellas, uh, your kids are starting out fishing and want to learn how to fish, start off with mono. Braid will cut their fingers. Especially if they've got their fingers holding you, just like you teach them to hold it for a bite, to feel the bite, which is all very good and well. But at a young age, and if they do, if something does come along and grabs that line and takes off quickly, just pulls just a little bit, that's like a razor blade, that'll cut your fingers, and that hurts. Us as adults, we do it, but after like about the third time, we stop doing it, we learn. <laughs> but for young kids that's learning how to fish, stick with mono, e easiest way to go. And it's a lot easier to untangle. Like I said, braids are really hard to untangle. Okay. Well, that's an interesting one. This would be interesting to see what you guys think. Um, so overall for me, I mainly use braid on most of my fishing, as you probably just worked out. But when it comes to game fishing, trawling over summer, which is coming up, mackerel to marlin, might use mono. Um, pretty much everything else I use is braid. So I'll just give you an idea, so I want to be trawling outfits here, that is mono. And here's one of my live bait outfits. Oh, that's only a 4,000 stratic, or 5,000 stratic, sorry. That's 30 pound braid, 300 meters on there. You wouldn't get nowhere near that if that was mono. So it's that's a very thin 30 pound, and I catch a lot of cobia and jewfish and all sorts with this little 5,000. So braid. Braid for that, mono for trawling. Um, yeah, that's it guys. Well, that was a very interesting video. It'd be good to hear your thoughts. Can't wait to see the comments. <laughs> and, mate, apart from that, I'll see you uh, next week sometime. Thanks, guys.